Okay, I'm, I'm going to get started now. It's three after. Uh, my name is Squiggy Rubio. I'm a web developer at Calamuna, and I'm about to present on, I'm just going to share some tips on how to build websites that protect user privacy. Um, there was a session earlier today that went into a lot of detail about um, building Drupal websites that are very secure and um, has a lot more Drupal specific information. Uh, my presentation is more is like uh, applicable to any websites and um, and, and I'm going to focus um, like on third party scripts, but um, let's see. Um, so a little about me, I'm I've been a developer for over 15 years. I've been working with Drupal for 15 years and I've been uh, first, I was like a web designer slash web developer, and then uh, was a front end developer for a little while. And then I am currently have been a full stack developer for the past eight years. Um, I'm in the Bay Area, I uh, was born and raised in Northern California. And yeah, um, I also uh, worked for the Electronic Frontier Foundation for uh, a number of years. So privacy is something that I um, care a lot about and also have a lot of learned a lot about. Um, so let me let me get started. Um, so I'm kind of a the title of this session is kind of broad, um, but this is going to be a really brief and then my also my session proposal was very broad, but this is a very short presentation. So I'm going to focus on uh, third party trackers. Um, so Um, so most, excuse me, uh, most websites uh, leak visitor traffic to third parties. So it's not always clear um, whether, you know, I think there's a little bit of discussion about um, whether this, uh, whether all third parties are like tracking or not, um, or like it, or assets loaded over third party domo domains are uh, trackers. Um, so I think um, it's important to consider uh, the information that's being shared with uh, when you're we, when you are loading assets from third party domains. So like, for example, an image file or a JavaScript file, it might not be, you know, uh, behaving or doing any kind of thing that is would be considered tracking, um, but it still does share uh, information with uh, information through the um, the response header or the request header. Um, so typically, I think of uh, third party trackers as anything is, is, is or like a lot of, like the most common ways, excuse me, the most common ways that people share um, include third party trackers on their websites. Um, historically, and, and, and continue to do is through like, like buttons, Twitter rigid share plugins, um, analytics, um, like uh, share plugins, yeah, Google Analytics, embedded videos, um, hosted font files, script tags, image, iframe, like anything that loads something from a remote server. Um, so I think it's important to um, consider what is in an HTTP request. So it shares like your browser, your OS, your architecture, language, um, the referrer, and other identifying information in the headers. Um, it, it could, it, yeah, so, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm definitely learning a lot about this topic right now. So, um, so I think um, these slide, this couple, last couple of slides definitely could be updated, but um, yeah, so definitely at least like any uh, asset loaded over a third party domain, at least like, um, has the IP address and timestamp and and whatever is included in the um, in the um, um, in the, um, request header. So uh, I'm probably um, sort of lost some folks. So yeah, even one pixel images can yeah can share. Thanks, Matt. Can share information. Um, so yeah, there could be hidden information on a web page that's sharing, that's um, being loaded over a third-party domain. So, 
Um, so also um, one thing that um, third party trackers can do is uh, browser fingerprinting. And there's a tool that the EFF um, provides called Panopticlick and it allows you to to uh, test to review your own browser and how uniquely track uh, identify all your identifiable your browser is or how unique it is, and um, so and so right now it's um, browser fingerprinting is supposedly illegal according to the um, GT GDPR the uh, General Data Protection Regulation that um, a couple years ago was um, and um, went into we went into effect a couple years ago. So um, supposedly they're not supposed to, browser fingerprinting is not supposed to be happening. Um, so, but anyway, uh, a great uh, resource for, um, for like reviewing like uh, third party trackers on a website is Privacy Badger. Um, so you can install it and it will, um, let's see, it will like, uh, has a this uh, little drop down interface that shows you like all the different uh, third party trackers that it has blocked. So this is great um, if you have it installed. If you don't have it installed, um, you know your all these um, trackers will will gather your information and 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 um, quite a bit of information um, about you um, since they're like these are uh, scripts that it's um, detecting on the that's being loaded on the page. However, um, I noticed that some script files are not considered uh, third-party trackers. And this is kind of uh, real. I realized this, that this week as I was pre preparing this presentation. So for example, I have um, on my personal website, I have, uh, I need to clean up my site and, you know, remove the, this link to this, um, this font awesome domain. Um, and so, yeah, if, uh, Privacy Badger doesn't consider this <laughs> a third party script, even though it's a, or a third party tracker, but it is a third party script. So um, JavaScript um, is, you definitely want to um, use a lot of caution when loading scripts um, on your page from third party domains. You, you really need to um, really, uh, like, there has to be a lot of trust with that domain to to be uh, to not um, change kind of the behavior of that script maybe at some point later on I might not currently be as uh, a th a doing any kind of tracking behavior but it's I mean it's still loading the you know the request header information it still has access to that and then it's you know this script for example might not be um, you know tracking but it's a script file, so could, they could change that script file later and and start tracking me at another point. So it's just important to um, be aware of that. Um, and scripts, JavaScript files can introduce um, security vulnerabilities. So you definitely really want to be careful loading scripts from third parties. Um, let's see. Yeah, so I just said that third party scripts um, can introduce security vulnerabilities. Um, instead of loading Google fonts remotely, so I'm gonna um, next. I'm gonna start talk, kind of sharing a number of tips on how to avoid loading third-party scripts. But I'm also um, gonna share uh, uh, share some tips on um, how to avoid loading any kind of assets over um, through from a third-party domain because um, you know you're because I I'm, I think that if you if you even if you're just sharing like IP address and like with with the, that the domain like that user might have visited another website that does have tracking and they, they probably can have ways of correlating that little piece of data that was gathered from the site that you, um, where the tracking wasn't done and correlate it with the, the, with the um, data they collected on a site where the visitor, on another site where, um, where there, is, there is tracking being done. So uh, hopefully I just made sense. Um, <laughs> So it's so yeah. It started loading Google Fonts um, remotely. These can be uploaded to your own server. So this takes um, takes a bit of savvy, uh, a little bit of savviness to um, you know uh, update your CSS to load the fonts from the new location. You might have to do that. Um, and 
yeah, you can um, Google fonts does let you download them. So that's no problem adding to your adding them to your server as long as you are comfortable or have somebody to help you um, add the, um, you know, you know, kind of set things, get everything kind of set up correctly. Um, yeah, and if, if you're using other fonts that are not open source, um, you will, it's important to pay attention to the licensing, licensing agreements. And um, so it's, it's definitely easier to do this with open source fonts and, and, you, and you will want to like coordinate with designers around planning, um, planning out the font, you do the fonts that you use on your site. Um, if this is, if like privacy is like super important. Um, so next, um, let, you also should let users opt in um, to third party scripts for like video embeds and other types of embeds. Um, so for example, you could have like a screenshot of a video and then below that video, it can have a message that informs the user that clicking that embed will load third party content. So you can also create your own share links. So share links can consist of um, some HTML, a little bit of CSS, and um, about 10 lines of JavaScript. So I'm actually planning on um, releasing, like writing like open source share links because I just, I just seem, it seems like every, it, very rarely do, does anybody seem to know exactly how to make share links without using third party scripts or third party, yeah. So um, I, I, yeah, I think that's kind of one of the things that's on my to-do list. I was hoping to have that ready for today, but um, to share with everybody, but um, I will tweet it out in the near future. So um, you also want to, um, you should also self-host JavaScript plugins and libraries instead of loading them um, from third-party domains. Um, so externally hosted JavaScript files, like I said earlier, that increases the risk of uh, security vulnerabilities, such as um, XSS attacks. Uh, you can, you know, use build tools to compile your JavaScript. A lot of uh, sites do that, um, already are doing that now. So uh, also you should use uh, post request uh, for forms, never use get request. So a get request is where uh, the, um, the parameters of your whatever information is entered in your form gets sent over the URL gets and um, and third party trackers will collect any data sent over get request. So that's just like a probably very well known thing, but um, it's important to know that you shouldn't do that. Um, for and for so if and so that's like I just kind of covered stuff that's like mostly specific for uh, third party domains and how to like avoid. Um, sharing your website visitor traffic with them. Um, but then there's cases where, um, you know, maybe the organization's privacy needs are like more, more intense and in that, that maybe it's necessary not to like log any data from uh, visitors uh, to your website. And, um, you know, for if you're uh, like, get, have like a subpoena or like, I don't know, court order to like get a visitor log of visitors to your site um this has happened um you know, there's ways you can um you can just uh not log or store data or data in that case if that's you know there's there's uh modules and and some um things for i think there might be stuff for like linux servers and maybe some other types of servers where that um help with like scrubbing logging data on your server I'll also um there are open source analytics tools. So I um, I think that uh, Google Analytics is a is a poor excuse for um, you lo using like including third party scripts on your website. Um, so Google Analytics is like the most popular third party script, and they it collects a lot of data on your um, visitors to your website. And so um, so it, excuse me, I need to say umless, <laughs> but. <laughs> so, uh, excuse me. Yeah. So, for uh, I think there's a lot of um, a lot of instances where organizations like over like um, don't really need as um, complicated, com like sophisticated, sophisticated or complicated a tool as Google, Google Analytics. It has like a lot of features and 
um, it requires training and um, sometimes a lot of organization, organizations don't need all of those features. So some of the um, open source analytics tools might, um, some of them are a couple, at least a couple of them, or at least one of them is more, is more simple. Um, but I think Matt Tomo, is, is, which is formerly um, PWIC, has like a lot of great features. And so if, in, I don't think in all cases, like organizations like really need analytics tools as much as they think, but, um, you know, is it really, you know, um, meeting that organization, is it a really critical part of that organization's goals? Like, I mean, in some cases, like for smaller nonprofits and like how, or just nonprofits in general, like, um, it doesn't always, it doesn't, isn't clear to me that like knowing like your page counts on your site is always like going to be tied to funding, but, um, but I might be wrong. So, yeah. So, and also if a tool is really important to you, I think it's like, uh, or to or report to an organization, it might, I think it's uh, good to consider maybe paying some money for it. And in that case you could, you know, self host it. Um, there's, so those are just some thoughts. Um, my our thoughts on this is very kind of disorganized, but I hope hope that was like was in, in, in provocative. Um, okay, so I'm going to just speak a little bit about Drupal. So Drupal is good at security and privacy, but just make sure you enable HTTPS. And another thing that you might consider is um, enabling HTTPS strict transport security. So this um, makes ensures that any um, any asset that is loaded on your page is loaded over HTTPS connection. So um, I also wanted to talk about like uh, same origin policy, um, but I didn't make a slide for it, but that that's um, same origin policy. There's a way that you can um, change. So the HTTPS strict transport security, let me just add an, add a clarification that that's for, uh, that's a setting that you can um, set on your server. Um, and so the same origin policy is also a server setting in that you can, um, you can um, restrict which um, or do domains that you're at loading assets over. So that's just another thing I wanted to I wanted to include. So also, um, if you want your Drupal site to be secure, don't use shared hosting. Those are just the basics. Um, and here are a number of like uh, Drupal modules that are good for security. Um, so I haven't used all of these, but I just wanted to put them in a slide. And there are others. If you had, if you went to um, Mike Sh uh, Shropshire's presentation earlier, he he would have provided like a great overview of all Drupal modules and Drupal best practices for security. Um, so um, yeah, and so I guess another thing to consider is static HTML is always more secure than server side code. Um, so just as far as you know, if this is just more of a security um, thing, uh, more than a privacy um, um, suggestion or idea. But um, and then I just wanted to add uh, that third party. Uh, uh, there are there other types of third parties to to consider whether you trust them or not. So caching services, uh, cloud hosting CNDs, content delivery networks. So. Um, so caching services and CDNs have like, uh, like at least you're sharing your header, your um, request headers and like, which includes the IP address and a, and a number of other things. Um, the whole cloud hosting might access, be might be able to access or at least it's containing your, um, your uh, data as well for your application. So uh, that's um, just to, just to, you know, you know, and there's, cer there's certain organizations where privacy and security is a lot more important than others and they would be more um, consider these, but this is just, I'm just trying to hopefully, uh, trying to encourage more people to care about um, privacy. So, um, and there are a lot of digital privacy laws and I, uh, they're kind of uh, uh, hard to understand and confusing and complicated and it's um, I've, I've tried to read them and they're there. I think I need, would need to read them quite a bit more before I start talking about them. But uh, I can just mention mention them real quick. Uh, I didn't actually create a slide for it, but I do have it in my notes. So there's um, let's see where 
Where is it? Oh, here you go. Um, so there's the Medical Insurance Portability and, Account and Accountability Act, HIPAA. There's the Fair Credit Accounting, excuse me, Fair Credit Reporting Act, FCRA. There's the Education, the Family Education Rights and Privacy Act, FERPA. And then um, those are just concerning different injured industries that have for a while have um, had some had like privacy and security laws. Um, and then there's the GDPR, the General Data Pro Protection Regulation uh, that was enacted a couple years ago. And then the CCPA that was en enacted and in, 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 went into effect like last year. Um, and the, the, C, uh, the CCPA is the California Consumer Privacy Act. So the, these uh, con concern anyone because uh, because uh, the internet doesn't have borders. So you know these laws, um, if you, to, in order to protect people in California and people in Europe in the European Union, you have to you in a, basically just need to protect everybody and and meet the standards of those laws. So there, I could ramble on a little bit more um, about digital privacy laws, but I don't know that I would be super beneficial to anyone. <laughs> so I'm just gonna move on. And I think that might be the end. Oh yeah, so that's perfect. We have a little bit of time for questions. Thank you everybody for joining. Let's see how many people are here. I wish I could hear people. Does anybody want, is there any way that people can like share their screen? I can see anyone else because this feels like I'm talking to a wall. <laughs> so, any questions? Oops, let's see. Uh, did somebody try to join? Okay. Um, oh, yeah, they, 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 uh, so um, the question is, what would a what would I suggest for a really small nonprofit that might not be able not wouldn't be interested in hosting their own JavaScript servers? So you don't have to have a special server for your JavaScript. You can host it in the same place that you host your website, the same like the same system. So a device with like compiling and adding this, the JavaScript in a way that um, is, makes sense or in, you know, appropriate for your site. Um, so how do I strike a balance between privacy and having to develop your own code instead of using third parties? Well, I think it depends on how complicated your, your web presence is. If you have a very simple site, um, if your site doesn't require like logging into it, it could be a static site, and you know, like um, there's uh, you can even like some you know uh, if you host your site as a Google page, uh, GitHub page, um, that that can be served for free. So my personal website is I'm hosting it free for as a Google page, um, free and it's free off of GitHub.com. So that's, I don't know that that's very helpful, but that's. It really depends on the project. Any other questions? Okay, yeah, it, um, it might, yeah, it might, you might still need a developer or, or just somebody that has a little bit of like website savviness. Um, so, I don't, yeah, it's okay. Neglify also, Net, Netlify also has um, free plans and you can run them with Drupal, oh, with the Drupal backend. Oh, that's cool. 
Um, you might be able, yeah, you might be able to follow the GitHub instructions, um, the GitHub pages instructions uh, and Netlify. Uh, I think they have like some pretty easy way, uh, some like one click or like a, a way to install some of these with a, with a few, within a few clicks, like Netlify might be able to do that. Okay. Um, if there are any other questions, I'm going to move to the, um, the next presentation slide. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, Gatsby um, is a great uh, tool for building sites. Also, uh, Hugo is kind of, I think it's pretty easy to use um, or at least to install a static site, but it does require um, a compiling. Okay, that's not super simple. Uh, yeah, I think if you're just starting, you finding you can kind of copy examples of websites if you can edit HTML and and edit CSS. Like you know, like if you kind of start with the basics and add the add complexity on as you go, um, that might work if you're just starting out and just like learning how to create websites that's also something to consider and um if you're just yeah and if, if you're building your own site yeah there's like some places yeah that will let you host your site for free All right, well, thank you everybody for joining. Um, I wish I could have like seen everybody too. Um, this is uh, first time doing a virtual presentation. I appreciate you all hanging in there.